Welcome everyone to the Retinal Realities podcast, Youth Edition, today, where we have a very special guest for you. As you know, the Retinal Realities podcast deals with all issues affecting and relating to eye conditions, and specifically retinal degenerative eye conditions. And the youth podcast that we are dealing with today deals with the youth-related issues and areas that the youth will want to engage in further. Our guest today is a very talented young man by the name of Charlie Diasi, who is a sound engineer, voice artist, radio presenter, and podcast host himself. Charlie lives in Cape Town and suffers from glaucoma. Charlie has a guide dog by the name of Billy, who will be joining him today. And we are very grateful to have you on board, Charlie. So welcome to the first Retinal Realities Youth Edition podcast. Thank you, Charlie. Hi, Manny. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. Wonderful. And with me today is co-host Sonia Mahabir. Hi, Sonia. Hi. Hi, Manny. Hi, Charlie and all the listeners. Thanks. So we'll be going ahead and asking a few questions of Charlie today. Let's see what interesting and inspiring answers he has for us. Sonia, if you want to kick us off. Thank you, Charlie, for joining and welcome to Retina South Africa. As a first question, could you perhaps tell us a little about your journey in terms of life after school and what influenced your career path? If I have to do that, I would have to start from a really young age, but doing this fairly quickly, I was a big fan of radio, to say the truth. And I often used to want to know, how do they do certain things on radio? And long story short, I went to go and study sound engineering. And when I did that, that's when <laughs> things became clearer that it's not just as easy as some people make it to look out there on radio. And for me right now, I can safely say I enjoy what I'm doing, but it takes some time to get things done that you want to get done. Great. Thanks for that, Charlie. Just as a follow-up, how do you cope with being blind in your line of work and what are your support mechanisms? Many for me, being blind, actually, let me start there. Being blind as a person, it's, it's, it's really, really tough. Not that tough, but well, it is tough when you don't know what you're doing. But if you are familiar with what you're doing, then it becomes a little bit more easier. But what makes it then tough? The thing that makes it tough is that you have to struggle through and struggle through and struggle through in order to get from point A to point B. But if you then channel your mind in order to find solutions each and every time, wherever you find stumbling blocks, then it becomes easier. My support mechanisms, to say the truth, would be my cell phone, which is what I use. It has a speech synthesis to guide me through the cell phone itself and my computer, which has a speech synthesis to guide me through as well. Those are my support systems in order to help me, in order to get my life much more easier. Thanks. Just in terms of your question of support, the, the people surrounding you in terms of your family and work colleagues and that sort of thing, do you find that you do get a lot of support from those people? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I do get some support from my colleagues in order to help me through and um, uh, whenever I do would ask maybe, okay, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? They do help as much as they can because... Um, this is a two-way street. That's, that's, that's all I can say. It's a two-way street. If you don't ask for help, you won't get help. If you do ask for help, then you will get help. So for me, it, it, it is a two-way street. And that's how I would advise each and every other person that is dealing with a visually impaired or blind person, ask if the person wants to be helped. Because you'll find in some instances, they don't want to be helped. But what I can safely say, yeah, I do have colleagues and I do have family. My family is very supportive of what I do. And even, it's just a short story. Last night, I was just finishing doing one of my shows. Mm -hmm. And apparently one of my family members were listening in and they said, you know what, just keep on with this. I can even feel it that it's made for you because I couldn't even tell that you were blind. I'm listening to a blind person on the radio, you know? <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's just such a powerful message when you touch people like that across different wavelengths. That's, that's amazing. Okay, so thanks, Charlie. On that note of challenging moments, what would you say has been your 
biggest challenge and how have you overcome that? For me, well, <laughs> biggest challenge is like asking me, don't know the challenges in any rate. I do. But for me, the biggest challenge is navigating my way through life and uh, finding, you know, what uh, there is no assistance in some places and I have to navigate my way myself. Well, that happens. Yeah. So what happens is that when some stuff like that do happen, you know what, you have to, as I said, have a solution oriented mind. It's not easy having such a mind all the time because there, there comes a time where you feel like, you know what, I don't have any solutions for this. Uh, but for me, my biggest challenge is just navigating. Like I remember there was this one time when my cane, uh, before I had Billy, was ran over by a public transport. And unfortunately, one of these public transports, they, they will tell you, they are not liable for your cane. You understand? So in other words, we don't care if your cane is damaged or not. Make a way for yourself like all of us do. So that is the, the mentality and the, the kind of attitude that you find out here. It's, it's not that everyone is going to be helpful in everything. But you have to go on with all of that. So navigating is quite a challenge for blind people, especially for me as well. But even though I have to navigate my way through life, I know one thing. There is not a place where I will never find help. If I just look correctly, I will find help. It goes back to, if you want help, ask for help. That's brilliant advice, Charlie. Yeah, I think just what you talked about there, having a solution-based approach or mindset that's I think, a really a brilliant thing for youth to try and develop within them, try and, and solve problems, try and find solutions instead of focusing on problem and, and letting it swallow you. That's, that's, that's amazing. True. Yeah. Because that's why you would find even there's youth today that goes up to a state of even depression. And that's what we don't want with our youth today. If you have a, a problem in school, you can't work out um, a certain equation, you know, that there's no harm in asking until you, you understand. I yeah. was an inquisitive little child when I was at school. I used to ask. Teachers would get annoyed. Students would get annoyed. But I knew for one thing that I knew true. True is right. But, yeah. but I knew one thing that if I don't ask, I won't know the answer to what I want to know. Exactly. And it's not going to help me to sit there and not ask when I need to know something in order for me to pass. Yeah, exactly. And I think as they say in those situations, you know, I mean, 10 other people in the class are thinking the same or having the same issue, but are afraid to ask the question. So definitely helps to, to ask those questions. You're helping yourself and others. That's great uh, initiative and shown there, Charlie. And, you know, you've spoken about now some of the, the tough days and difficult situations. You know, we all go through these tough days, but wh what do you do to motivate and inspire yourself uh, to get through the, the difficult times? That's a beautiful one. And it's a really simple answer to that one. <laughs> I listen to radio. Okay. I just sit down, leave everything, shut off my computer, put on the radio, and there you go. I listen to radio because my first love was with radio. So learning the new stuff and new trends that radio is now doing and have makes me only to become a better a technical producer as well. And, and that is the reason that you'd find me. I, I channel hop from channel to channel, uh, maybe, or I would listen even to international. Today, you'd find me listening maybe to a South African radio station. Next, you'll find me listening to a Kenyan radio station and then, and so on and so on and so on, or American radio station and stuff like that. I do that channel hopping in order to find the trends in the different countries and see, hmm, how can I incorporate that? Taking all those different styles and incorporating them into one jingle, into making it in, into one jingle or one promo, something like that. And that motivates me to, to even be better as well and try and, and even improve in my skill. So I'm hitting two birds here with one stone. Mm. Um, that ties back into your passion and what you love doing, right? So I'm sure that does make you feel better on those down days. In closing, Charlie, please could you share some words of inspiration with the youth of Retina South Africa? Well, the only thing I can say is you're only disabled when you let yourself be disabled. And what do I mean with that? Is that you 
are as able as you are letting yourself and your mind to be. If you know and trust that you can do things and be more than what your situation is telling you to be, I'm pretty sure that you can accomplish anything. Because technology out here is not up to A grade, but it is perfect enough for everyone to be able to do everything that they so wish to become. If you want to become a psychologist, only the sky is your limit. If you want to become a radio presenter, only the sky is your limit. I did it. Here am I. I'm not famous as much as I would love to be and work in one of those big commercial stations, big national stations. But well, here am I. Mm -hmm. And I'm still striving to go there. So what is stopping you? That's the only question I have. I would say live your life, be productive and don't stop. Don't ever stop and don't ever give up on your dreams. If you have a dream, keep it close to your chest. Strap it to your chest if you have to. And keep on moving forward and making sure that you reach that dream. One day when you reach that dream, you look back throughout all your struggles and you'll find out, you know what? It was worth it because look at you now. Look at where you are now after you have reached your dream. You understand? All of us goes through life and we never stop learning until our dying day. We'll all learn something. So yeah, keep pushing, be safe and know that you are as able as you allow yourself to be. So that's why I'm saying you are disabled if you feel you are disabled. Thank you for that, Charlie. That was absolutely amazing words there. So inspiring and, and motivating. That that's really, I think, encapsulates you in a few sentences there, Charlie, that never give up attitude, that keep pushing forward. I love that last one about you're as able as you want to be. That's brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much, Charlie, for being with us for this podcast. Uh, you know, there's so many more questions that I have. And, you know, I definitely think that we'd love to have you back on air on one of our platforms for a more in-depth interview, more in-depth about your career and the technical aspects of it uh, would be really interesting for the youth out there. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to have you back again soon, Charlie. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It is quite a privilege to be with you. Yeah, and I enjoyed being with you here. Thank you. Thanks so much, Charlie. Now you can catch our other Rational Realities podcasts and the Youth Edition podcasts on our uh, podcast platform, Rational Realities, uh, which you can check out on Spotify, as well as our Facebook page. We have our Rational Realities Facebook page, or you can just check out the Retina SA Facebook page and also follow us on YouTube on the Retina South Africa. And you can link with us through our website as well, which is www.retinasa.org.za. And we have all of our information and links and contact details up on there. So please get in contact with us. And in terms of future topics for, of discussion, please get in contact and let us know what you would like to hear as the youth that we serve and let us know where your interest lies. And we will do our best to try and facilitate that and get speakers that will talk to those points. So thank you all for listening today. And we hope to have you join us once again. And in closing, one of our taglines that we want to try and get going is is that we want to empower the youth today for a brighter tomorrow thank you very much sonia for that and for leading the youth subcommittee so well thank you all and good night <music>